Hey there, I'm Katie Cowan, and this is the Creative Boom Podcast. This is in fact my final episode for season one, so I'm feeling pretty emotional right now. I have found this journey to really get me through what has been a very challenging year for many of us. I hope that I've been able to provide you with a little bit of light and love and happiness on a weekly basis through talking to creatives from all walks of life, whether established or just starting out on their journey. So thank you for listening and joining me on this adventure. And I hope you'll come back for season two, um, details of which I'll reveal later this year. My next guest is Kofi Nelson. He's a multidisciplinary artist based in Manchester. He's just graduated from the University of Salford with a degree in graphic design. And now he's just out here in the big world trying to find his way, as he puts it. He first actually got into design during high school where one of his GCSEs was in the subject and he got an A. He thought, oh, I must be good at this, so I should keep going. A few weeks after finishing his GCSEs, he started to mess about with music production software, making terrible music, of course, his words, not mine. But he thought he was the best music he was making in the world. Fast forward four years and he's collaborated with musicians locally as well as internationally. He's branded and released his first EP. He's built and launched his own website and created the music for a documentary series. Without further ado, here is my last and final guest for season one, Kofi, who came across to my house in South Manchester to have a cup of tea and talk about his career so far. I'm here with my next guest, Kofi. Hi, welcome. Hi. Thanks for coming around to my house. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, it's just really nice to have somebody else in my house other than my husband, Tom, mm. which <laughs> sounds a little bit inappropriate, but no, it's just like, oh my God, another human. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How have you been coping this year with everything that's been happening? I've been okay. Just trying to stay calm, um, relaxed. I've got into meditation. Um, I got into that maybe sometime late last year. Yeah. Um, it's kind of difficult though, because um, with meditation, they normally talk about how you should um, try and try and relax, try and control your breathing. But um, also when it comes to the thoughts that come into your head, yeah, um, don't try and get rid of them. It's okay to have thoughts, um, but just just let them let them be. Don't try and like I said, get rid of them. Just don't don't you know. dwell on them. Just let them go out. I read a really yeah. good um, bit of um, like an explanation about meditation, and it was a bit mm. like. It's like imagining a train going in one ear and okay. going out the other okay. and just carrying all those thoughts mm. out. And that's how I kind of meditate. But I'm I'm really fidgety and I make that excuse and say, oh, I'm, I could never meditate. But, you know, I've just started to get into a bit of yoga. I do okay. Um, okay. yoga with Adrienne. Um, okay. She's really cool. American. I think she's American. She might be Canadian. Um, <laughs> but she's got this really soothing voice. And mm. I found that without realizing I've done actually done a bit of meditation because mm. I'm a bit of a rebel because I'll be like I don't like um to have to force myself to sit still because okay. I'm like I can never stop I'm really fidgety mm. and I'm like mm. I want to oh this is I'm, I haven't got the patience yeah. so how do you how do you sit there and find the patience to be honest I only do it for five minutes all right okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I put a timer on my phone and um I just I just sit on the bed I cross my legs close yeah. my eyes um and just just try and keep still because it's only five minutes so I'm like okay let me just try five minutes and then after that apparently there's a really good um program by Sam Harris okay and um, he has a podcast as well um and that is supposed to be amazing Tom said my husband Tom he got into that last year and then kind of you know life gets busy and you forget and you stop prioritizing these little mm. things that you try and introduce into your schedule and um, yeah, he's just announced last night because I'm getting so many good benefits from this yoga. He said, right, I'm going to start doing my daily meditation practice again. And okay. so it was interesting to hear you say that because mm. I've been asking a lot of friends and people over the last couple of weeks, how have you coped? You know, because we've come out of lockdown and I suppose in my mind, very naively, I kind of had this hope that that would be it. Okay. So we'd be all right now. Hmm. Um, but there's still the virus out there and it's still carrying on. So, and, and, and you've just graduated. How, how yeah. does that feel? It's weird. It doesn't feel like I have graduated because, um, it, we kind of just stopped. Everything just stopped. And yeah. we're like, okay, work from home now. We'll do like zoom or we'll do Microsoft teams. But, um, yeah, it's weird. It just feels like it didn't 
didn't finish or didn't end properly. And mm. I was looking forward to it. Like at the at the start of the year, that was the one thing I was looking forward to. So to know that that we we were not doing it anymore is um, not nice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because yeah. I suppose we all, when we're um, when we go to university, we always have that like you know lovely goal in mind yeah, where we'll yeah. be able to celebrate with our friends mm. and throw our kind of graduation yeah. hats in the air. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there'll be a party at some point next year. Hopefully, uh, yeah. hopefully a chance for you guys to all get together because mm. you went to uh, Salford University. Salford University. Yeah. yeah what's yeah. what's that like? What's the graphic design course like there? It's nice. It's a big course. Um, it's not as big as some other courses. Like um, I'm hearing, like psychology courses can be like over a hundred people, but our course was about I think like 65 or something like that yeah so um but yeah it was it was a good course um that's nice though because you can get to know everybody exactly yeah yeah so I was kind of I was the type of person I'd just speak to anyone like I'm open for a conversation with anyone I've always been like that anyway um so yeah I would just speak to other people how are you getting on with your work what projects are you doing um and then just asking for feedback or giving other people feedback or whatever you're already doing what a lot of people take you know 10 years to figure out Mm -hmm. especially if they like go freelance and become a designer that way um you know the networking and the making contacts and the giving and the the, you Mm. know the giving back that kind of goes a long way and and it's done you quite well in terms of um getting to where you are now but you Mm. you're not just a designer that's just graduated and what what just looking for a job maybe but you're also a music producer musician yeah yeah so i got into that probably like like uh, let's say four years ago um right. yeah my sister it's, it's because of my sister really oh okay so she 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 hadn't a really she has a really old ipad and um one day i picked it up and i noticed this app on the ipad called launchpad yeah so it's like a music production app so yeah. it came with a load of pre-installed sounds on there so i was just messing around with some of the sounds and i was like okay this is cool i could i could probably get into this and then um, probably about a week later, I was trying to like take the music I put or take the music I made on the app. And then I was putting it on YouTube and all this, all these places, SoundCloud. Yeah. I was like, okay, I could, I could really get into this. So um, that, that's, that's, that's where it all started in my bedroom at home. Yeah. So you've been doing that and yeah. studying graphic design yeah, yeah. and you've just graduated with honours yeah. and and but you haven't told the whole story because I got the impression over email and our little Instagram chats you're quite a humble guy and and okay. actually what you've done is you've collaborated with musicians yeah, um, yeah. not just locally but all over the place mm-hmm. and um, I think because I do my research and it okay. might sound a little bit stalky but I noticed there was an Instagram post where he said oh I'm in a club and they're playing my tune okay yeah yeah that, that's that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I forget about moments like that actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we all do, don't yeah, we? I suppose yeah. it's, I suppose it's sometimes like hard to imagine. You know, all the things we achieve. You mm. know, like you know, I don't know. Personally, Creative Boom's got a lot, a lot yeah, of people yeah. going on it now, and when people say to me, "Oh, you must, you must be quite proud of that," <laughs> I'm like, hmm. "Yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Next question. <laughs> mm, yeah. So who who have you collaborated with then? What what are the kind of musicians? Okay, so the music I make uh, it's hard to describe. It, it, when I when I first started, it was a lot of EDM music because mm-hmm. I was listening to a lot of artists like Disclosure mm-hmm. and Duke Demont and yeah, yeah. Um, Azari and um, Avicii. All right, okay. So that's that was who I was listening to at the time. So I started to naturally make EDM music. Yeah. Um, also, that's kind of like the default. Um, genre that was on the iPad when I first started making music. Yeah. Um, but as the years went on, I went through like different phases of listening to different music and I went through my whole like Tupac obsession phase to the, <laughs> to the point where I listened to all of his albums and I'd look into like different theories, uh, whether he's alive or he's not alive or all that type of stuff. So Just I, that, dealt, went down a very big... Went, yeah. So then I became obsessed with that and then I, I kind of looked more into hip hop um, and then I started to make that type of music. So hip hop instrumentals, um, and then R and B instrumentals. And then maybe I try and fuse the two of them together. Amazing. Yeah. yeah Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, this um, is where we're going to, sh- you know, reveal our age gap and I'm probably going to embarrass myself and you, but you know, when I mm. was sort of a teenager, I started um, hanging around with a bunch of lads mm. Um, and they sort of introduced me to hip hop. Okay. And at the time it was kind of 1994, 95. Okay. So it was a lot of stuff like Tribe Called Quest okay, and okay. EPMD and mm. 
Keras one. And so I grew up with all of that in the sort of 90s and have taken it with me ever since. And I kind of left university, graduated. Obviously, I've kept an eye on things. Oh, and I also really heavily got into jungle. Okay. So I know okay. I'm very familiar with disclosure. I feel like I'm like doing okay here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but it, it's true. It's not everybody who's 41 like me will say that they've like not prioritized music over the last kind of 20 years. Mm-hmm. But I understand what, what they say when people sort of get stuck in a kind of era, maybe mm-hmm. their teenage years, their kind of coming of age years, mm-hmm. and they they might try and listen to new music and they might try and get yeah, into new yeah. stuff. But I am so stuck in the 90s and I really need to get out of out of that really because I, I need to sort of learn some new kind of um and and I need your, you know, guidance. <laughs> Is what I'm trying to say. Because, yeah, yeah. like, I, I, I'm, you know, I, I talk to my brother and he's seven years younger than me. So he's a little bit more in touch, I think, with what's going on um, musically. Mm. But I kind of started a business um, in 2007 and just started working mm. and kind of forgot. And it's really, it's, it's quite sad, actually, that you forget these things that you loved and cherished. Mm. Um, so you're, you're doing this kind of, you, you've got this kind of career ahead of you that, well, I suppose you're kind of at a crossroads, aren't you? Because yeah, you've got yeah. graphic design, which you said you studied at GCSE. Is that right? Um, yeah. So I studied that at GCSE. I started that, yeah, year 10. Year yeah, 10, yeah. yeah. And yeah, then so music as well. Music as well. That started um, two years after. Yeah, yeah. yeah and so. the two kind of come together because you've been designing the um, record sleeves, the, mm. the, the kind of um, for Spotify, I would presume yeah, these days. Yeah, yeah. Um, are any of your kind of tracks being turned into vinyl? No. Is no. it all just digital? It's all just digital, yeah. Okay, yeah, this yeah. is how old I am. Yeah. Like I've, I've never actually <laughs> used a record player or anything. Like it wasn't until I think like last year I realised that when you move the needle, you change the song. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, that to me was like... This crazy, makes yeah. me feel a little bit better. <laughs> I've, I've retained a little bit yeah. of coolness. Um, my husband, Tom, used to DJ and he's still got his Technics upstairs okay. in yeah. the attic with about a thousand records, mm. which he's been saying for the last 20 years he's going to go through and scale down and just keep kind of the ones that he really kind of cherishes. Mm. And they're all up there and they're so heavy and they're just all over all these shelves. And I'm just like, will you please buy a new mixer so we mm. can go through some of these records and yeah. see what's what. So, you know, if you ever want to... Go and have a look. <laughs> I'm sure there's some yeah. classics in there. Mm. So how when did you get into music? What um so that was in 2016. Right, okay. Yeah, so literally just after I finished my GCSEs. Right, okay. Um, and then I had that six week period between um, high school and college. Right. So it was I had six weeks to basically just mess around. Play and around see, and play, you... play around and see what I could make. Yeah, yeah. So within like a couple of weeks I was putting stuff on YouTube and Stuff like that, but they weren't—they weren't very good. Like I listen to them now, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, what, what was that?" You know, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you, 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 when you, when you look back, you can see how far you've come. You know, yeah, so, definitely. Yeah, that, yeah. That's there's a really good bit of advice, isn't there? What, what was it? It was like, um, if you're not embarrassed by what you did before, then you're not improving. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's that's what it is. Yeah. So, what was the last bit of music that you made that you're kind of like, yeah, that's re- I'm really proud of that. As in most recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably last week. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, a new album came out by an R&B artist called Summer Walker. And um, I've been listening to her music for a while. And um, on the day it came out, I had this like kind of feeling that I wanted to make something in the style of her production. Yeah. So I was like, okay, no matter what, after I listen to this album, I'm going to make something. And um, I already had a few ideas in my head. Um, and then what I did is I I found my favorite song off the album. I put it into my music software. And then what I did is I built um, the instrumental. I, I tried to like recreate it yeah. around the song. So that way it matches it matches the vocals and it has the same feeling. So I, I was proud because I, I, I've not really done stuff like that before. Yeah. So that was that was cool. It's yeah. nice to push ourselves, isn't it? And kind yeah. of try new things. Mm, and, exactly. And then be quite happy with how it turns out, I guess. Yeah, yeah definitely. So you mentioned a sister. A sister, yeah, yeah. Are you? Is that just all you have in, in your siblings, or? Um, I've got, yeah, I've got an older sister, so ten years older. Wow. And then I've got two younger brothers. Um, one of them is six; he's about to turn seven. Oh. Um, and then one of them has just turned four. Oh, they're great ages. Yeah, so yeah. do they look up to you? And they look up to me. They love me so much. Every time I see them, they run over to me, hug me, kiss me everything they want to hear all my music they're like go and play it play it and I could sit there for hours and just 
show them how it works. You show them and, how it works, yeah, yeah. And do you think you've got other budding musicians in the family then? Yeah, yeah. So my dad used to play, um, he used to play piano in um, sandals in Jamaica because right. he, he's from Jamaica originally. Right, okay. So he used to play at the hotel. Yeah, right. Yeah, is that yeah. is that the it's the kind of holiday resort? Is holiday it for couples? Yeah, yeah. Honeymoons. So, yeah, yeah. They always advertise that place on um God, they look at make it look amazing, yeah, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I remember watching those adverts when I was a kid thinking, Oh my god, I hope I can get to go there one mm. day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Oh, so um mm. are you originally from Manchester? Originally, yeah. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Oh, that's cool. So you mm. can just go to uni on your doorstep exactly, and your yeah, families yeah. nearby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's really lucky. Mm. Um a lot of people go to university with a kind of priority to get away as far away as possible mm-hmm. from their family and go yeah. and experience somewhere completely different, but you didn't fancy going anywhere else? No, no, I know this city and there's still a lot of even though there's still a lot of areas that I've not explored, but um it's just yeah, I thought, let me stay here. I know here, I'm familiar with here. Yeah. Um, and then I can kind of just explore when I want to. You know? yeah. yeah. Would you say you're a home bird? Um, yes, I like to be at home. Yeah. 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 So you're not bothered about traveling and no, no. you sound very like Tom. <laughs> he's like, he literally just said to me last night as well, he went, I'm just, you know me, I'm not bothered about going out anywhere. I quite like to stay at home mm. as long as I've got all my books, which yeah. you can see here, you know, we're constantly having to move things around and... You know, he announces, he makes this announcement to the room. He's like, I think we need to have a purge. We need to take some books to the charity shop because yeah, yeah. he keeps gaining some for his birthdays, Christmas. You know, mm. maybe I'll get him a book now and again. Um, maybe we'll go to a charity shop and buy some books too. And yeah, it's just a constant sort of turnover of titles. Um, and he just likes to sit in that chair right there. And I have to leave him alone. I go in another room. <laughs> give him some peace and quiet because yeah, as yeah. you can imagine I'm like chatting away at him um, in the morning but yeah um so you mentioned like hip-hop mm. um is, th- is that kind of like where you're hoping to go into then or is it just you know you, how do you sort of collaborate with these musicians you know how does it come about um okay so hip-hop for me yeah that's that's the genre that I'm kind of I gradu- gra- gravitate towards mm. um I just I, I like making it it's not really it's, it's yeah I just like making it yeah so um and as a designer do you kind of like look back at classic albums mm-hmm. and, and and love the kind of sleeves have you yeah. got any sort of favorites oh favorites because like I think I always thought Tribe Called Quest had some really good covers like Low End Theory is a beautiful cover mm. um I don't know about favorites there's so many um we um when we first started this I say we when I first started this podcast um, I interviewed uh, Malcolm Garrett and okay, he yeah, yeah. designed some lots of album sleeves mm. um, in the 70s and 80s for bands like Duran Duran and mm. um, Simple Minds. And, um, and then later on, Ian Anderson of the Designers Republic, okay. he's kind of done so many things for Warp Records and Michael C. Place. Um, it's like a forgotten kind of, uh, it's, it's like gone. And it's really sad mm. how like technology's moved on. It's allowing you from a very old iPad to make these awesome tunes. But, mm. you know, it's in my lifetime in just like 20 years, it's kind of gone from vinyl, these like physical things that you could have in your hand, which was quite mm. a nice thing to do. Go to record shops and mm. scout through yeah. and have a look and see what kind of, you know, gems you could find. And then now it's kind of like just this digital thing that doesn't exist. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, I still yeah. freak out when I download computer games. Mm. I'm like, I can't, what? I'm not going to get a physical copy. Mm. You know, it's, yeah. it's like, no, you just got to wait an hour and then it's going to be on your PS4. Yeah. Are you a, are you a gamer? I used to be. I can't lie. I used to be. Um, I used to play a lot of um, FIFA when right. I used to. Because I, yeah. I, I had the whole dream, you know, I wanted to be a footballer. Right. That was my whole thing back in high school. Um, not high school primary school right okay yeah yeah so um yeah i wanted to be a footballer and i was really into football and i'd get you know fifa 10 fifa 11 fifa 12 and i kind of stopped at fifa 12 because that's when i kind of fell out of love with football and stuff oh really so um yeah but yeah mostly football games i used to play yeah Yeah. mostly and who's your team if if any it was United, but now now I couldn't care less about football. You couldn't, you couldn't, couldn't be bothered. Oh, that's no. fine then. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, yeah. that's okay. I can sort of reveal I'm a City fan. So okay, okay. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be all right. <laughs> yeah, I think um, football's been a bit of a weird one this year, anyway, hasn't it? Yeah, you exactly. just haven't been able to go and mm. the the like crowd noise. I've got a friend who works for Man City on the mm. digital team, and he said they were trying out lots of different crowd noise to sort of see what would work and. Mm coming up with all these ideas to put in the stands and things and yeah it was just um very very weird bonkers 
So what are you going to do now then? What, what's the next step? You've graduated, you're making music, mm. you know, have you got any plans? Or are you kind of more of a kind of person that takes it as it comes? Well, I, I need to plan. That's, that's the thing. The, the next step is to plan. Yeah. What, what do I want to do? Um, so the next step is, yeah, figuring that out. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. When you figure it out, can you let me know? Cause definitely, yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> no, as in, I, I haven't got a clue what I'm okay, doing next. Okay, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's yeah. just like a normal human thing. We, mm. we kind of have an idea of what we want to do, but mm. we kind of, I don't know, we just maybe take a little bit of this, take a little bit of that and see mm. where it takes us. Yeah. And you, you just don't know where you're going to end up. Like you pick up an old iPad one day and then you're in a club and you can hear a, mm-hmm. a track. And yeah. You're so you're so laid back about it. I'd be like, oh my god, I'm yeah, in yeah. the club. <laughs> yeah, it's just like I notice that once ever whenever I finish a piece of music, I'm like, okay, what's next? I'm not really thinking about okay, this sounds amazing. I've because I've listened to it probably for like five hours in yeah. a in a row just whilst I'm making it. So I'm kind of I'm like, okay, this is finished now. What's next? What's, you know? Yeah, just, you're always thinking about the next thing. The next thing, yeah. That's yeah. probably a secret of successful people, I think, because okay, okay. you don't dwell too much. No, no, no. You've got to keep pushing forward, yeah. keep moving forward and refining and, and improving mm. and, and seeing, okay, what's next? What can I do next? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's cool. Mm. Okay, so were you always creative as a kid? Um, as a kid. Because like, if you wanted to be a footballer, how did you, how did you know that you loved you know, being creative? Um, I don't, I, I used to, I always used to draw little um, like faces yeah. in like little A5 notepads when I was younger. And then that led to um, getting like a little paint set when I was a bit older. And then I yeah. got into like painting, you know, with watercolors and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, found out about like digital software. So like Photoshop and stuff like that. Yeah. So I started to make like little collages or maybe I'd use that like iMovie and make, um, I'd take like a song and then I'd take audio, not not audio, um, like pictures. And then I'd kind of like try and tell a story with the pictures so that it matches the audio or just little stuff so like that. So you've always yeah. kind of had, you've always been on this path then. Yeah, yeah. Because I always ask this question because there's always like a moment when you're a kid when you start playing around with maybe a bit of software or, mm. you know, drawing, drawing something on a bit of paper and, it all kind of marries up. For me, I always wrote stories. And okay. so I ended up being a journalist, which is quite, you know, a natural step, I guess. And mm-hmm. and, and just had a fascination with people. I'm quite nosy. So I'm like, okay. tell me all about yourself. <laughs> How yeah. did you get to where you are? And mm. I really enjoy that. So it's interesting you'd say that you, you did these kind of, you know, animations, I guess, really. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. I think I've still got the video now because... Um, it was actually part of a um, GCSE project. I think it was year 11. So the project title was called um, Fragments. Huh. So it, you kind of had to take elements of something and either like bring it together or break it apart so that you got like little pieces of it. Um, so I took a song um, by a recording artist called Skepta. He's from London. Yeah. Um, I think the song is called, um, what's it called? I think it's called. Uh, somebody's everything I think it's called um so it just like tells a story about this girl who was like suffering from abuse or something like that and um just just basically saying oh it's going to be okay you'll be you'll be okay so I kind of had to tell that story with pictures and um I'll get pictures off Pinterest I've still got the Pinterest board to this day um and I would kind of just get the audio put it into the software and then kind of match you know, take pictures and make it match the so audio. So making a music video, Making basically. a music video, yeah, yeah. Is that is that what you do as well? No, I don't do that as well. Um, is that something you'd want to get into? I'd definitely be up for it. Um, I was asked this question actually probably about two weeks ago, three weeks ago when I was doing the photo shoot with Sophia Curry. Yeah, um, they were great picks. Thank you. I've got, uh, there's there's loads more. There's about 300. Jay messaged me, Jaheed. He said... Okay. Um, he said, you know, he's probably got those photographs ready for this podcast interview. I was like, oh, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that would yeah. make me feel really special. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I was like, okay, I need some photographs and I know I've got this coming up. So let me let me try and kill two birds with one, one yeah, stone. She, she's a great photographer, she isn't is. she? Amazing, amazing, yeah. I only just followed her. Um, what was her name again? Sophie? Sophia Carey. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Local Manchester photographer, specialises in portraits. She's from London, actually. Oh, she's from London? Yeah, oh, sorry, Friday. Sophie. God. <laughs> that was a okay. wrong assumption to make. <laughs> so do you go like down to London a lot? I've, I've never been. 
Oh, have you never been? No, no. She, um, we're at the, we're in the same course at uni. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So that's how we met. Oh, yeah. so you're all collaborating with mm, each other already yeah, yeah. and like lifting each other up. Yeah, and, yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Because mm. I have like looked and delved and I thought, okay, so he knows and she knows. All right, you're mm. all connected. And, yeah. and that's great because you're going into the world now, a very kind of, you know, uncertain time. Mm. Um, you know, I'm not putting doom and gloom on it. <laughs> <laughs> I started yeah, Creative yeah. Boom after the global economic oh, okay, recession yeah, yeah, yeah. of 2008. It was, yeah. And and started this in 2009 mm. um, to support other creatives who were struggling. And actually what came out of that, you know, difficult time was so much opportunity. Um, there were lots of graduates who were coming out of university and they couldn't get a job. Mm. And they went freelance straight away. And those same people that I've been kind of supporting and or know of um, are now running creative agencies um, nice. with staff. In one case, he's got 50 staff. Wow. So, you know, there was all this opportunity that came out of this time because I guess brands are looking to save money. Hmm. And so they might, sorry, big agencies, they might sort of like look to the smaller kind of solutions hmm. um, just to sort of get them through these tough times. And that's where as a freelance graphic designer or illustrator or, uh, you know, a marketing person, you can really kind of capitalize on that and mm. not be afraid to sort of say, use me instead of a large agency, because um, I'm going to be sort of, you're going to be my number one priority. Um, I'm going to be at the end of the phone when you need me. Um, I'm going to be the only person that you deal with, you know, so the person you speak to on the phone is the person who's going to be actually doing the work mm -hmm. and I don't have an office or expensive outgoings. So my day rate is, you know, reasonable. Um, obviously you don't want to cheapen yourself, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you can say reasonable and it works and it will be okay. Do you, um, have you been sort of sending your CV out? Have you got an intent intention to sort of become a graphic designer, at a creative agency, or are you thinking perhaps freelance because I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about both. Yeah. 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 I, I don't think right now I should kind of put all my eggs in one basket. No, definitely not. Yeah, so it's just getting, yeah, my CV up to date, my portfolio up to date. Um, and yeah, that, an online presence as well. Yeah. What's the mood like out there? Is it, is it looking you know, positive or um, have you been sort of contacting anyone yet? Not yet, but I have seen some vacancies available in certain places, you know, like um, if you look on LinkedIn, I'm trying to get yeah. like onto LinkedIn properly. Yeah. Um, LinkedIn's the place to be. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I was uh, interviewing Craig Black and he said he'd gone through all the kind of social media and he realized that he got the most from LinkedIn Okay, and he gave this tip. He said, post on Tuesdays at 8 30 a.m <laughs> and that post whatever you put on mm. will keep going until the following Tuesday okay well. and it's just a really good way to sort of keep putting your work out there mm. and getting in front of potential clients or employee mm. employers and it's just a really great great way to stay on people's radar so mm. I've been doing that and today I broke protocol and posted something at 8 30 <laughs> on Monday so uh. I don't know Craig's probably listening to this and he's going no oh. that's Katie, what did I tell you? <laughs> you can just try again next week. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the thing is there's all these things that are happening, mm. um, like so many different social media platforms and the algorith algorithms have changed so much over the last couple of years. Mm. You know, it's difficult to sort of make a name for yourself on Instagram. Mm. Um, and there's this great um, hashtag on Twitter at the moment. And I can't remember. <laughs> Where's my phone? Hang on a second. Right, right. It's, it's kind of like this growing, it's this growing backlash against this, um, you know, that, that you have to have a certain number of followers mm. to be able to sort of get noticed. And it's called, God, people are going to be shaking their heads thinking, come on, Katie, you should know this. Um, blah, 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 blah. Nobody Artists Club or the Under 10K Gang. Okay. And the idea is that you share your work and you say, this is who I am. And there's another one called Portfolio Day as well, which does really well. Um, and the idea is that you, you're you trying to get your name out there. And I've just discovered so many amazing creatives through mm. just those two hashtags. Because um, as, a, as a publisher, as somebody who runs this magazine, I'm always looking for people I can feature. Mm. And I've relied very much on people coming to me because I don't get time as much as I'd like to go out and 
find talent that I want to write about. Yeah. Um, that's only been really recent that I've been able to do that. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's Monday morning and we're just trying to get our heads around. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I do feel like I've like lost a few social skills in the last six months. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's understandable. I mean, if we're in the house all the time. Oh my God, just, talking to the wall. Yeah, exactly. Going crazy. Yeah. Like I do, like Tom's gone out today because um, he's got to go and see a client. And I'm like, after you've gone, I'll be like just talking to myself, walking mm. around the house and, yeah. going and doing things like, why did I come in here? Yeah. You know, it's just, it's an age thing, I think. No, I talk to myself all the time. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I was telling my sister about it. I was like, do you talk to yourself? She was like, no, that's weird. Like, oh. <laughs> so, uh, I do it all the time, all day, every day. Your sister's yeah. cooler than us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. What does your sister do? She is, she works in accounting. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah, an so, accountant, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's nice. Yeah. Very good. So there had to be one creative, didn't mm. there? She you is know? creative though. Oh, yeah, is yeah. She? yeah, yeah. So she does all sorts like editing videos, graphic design, all sorts. Oh, yeah, amazing. Yeah. So, so she inspired you a little bit. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. To say so, yeah. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Um, so like if you've grown up in Manchester and mm. you've been here your whole life, you must have just such an amazing network of family and friends. Mm. This must just be so home to you. I mean, Manchester's a great city, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. 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 Um, obviously things are sort of changing. We don't know whether there's going to be a vaccine. Um, we don't know whether we're going to be able to go back into the workplace. Have you been quite comfortable going out there and doing things or are you kind of being quite conservative and staying at home? And um, I, I think that I've kind of developed a balance. So I kind yeah. of only really need to go places um, if it's essential. Yeah. So like if it's to like the city centre or somewhere. Um, sometimes I'll be like, do I really need to go that far? Do I really need to travel? Um, so I kind of just do stuff if I really, really have to, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But if not, then I'll stay at home. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. Because like you were um, one of the speakers just before we were told to go into lockdown and actually Jay didn't think Speak Up was going to happen in Manchester. Okay, yeah, he said, yeah, You yeah. were one of the presenters. Mm -hmm. you, you kind of gave a talk. Yeah. Um, I mean, how did that feel? That was your first? First ever, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, honestly, like the week before, I couldn't actually sleep. I, I was so nervous because um, I was used to doing presentations before. Like I'd, I'd have to do them on my course, you know, it was like a mandatory element. So I had to do them before, but because I knew that this time I'd have to do it by myself and it's something that's like personal to me. So I'm like, okay, I've got to kind of be vulnerable right now in front of people that I don't know. Um, Scary. Yeah, and tell them about myself. And I'm thinking... Do they even care? Like, why would they care about me and what I've got going on over here? Um, so yeah, it was definitely scary. Like I, I was definitely scared. I'm not gonna lie. I tell anyone that. Yeah, <laughs> it's terrifying. Yeah. I mean, I, every time I get up and do a talk and, and it rarely happens these days because I'll avoid them as much as possible. Mm. Um, yeah, you look around at the room and you're just kind of like, oh my God, how yeah. am I going to do this? Mm. But you'll find a friendly face, won't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you'll yeah. focus in yeah. on them and mm. you calm down after about two or three minutes. Yeah. It's amazing. You get into the flow of it and you mm. really enjoy it. And and really, you're talking about a subject that you're really comfortable with yeah. because you're talking about your work and, yeah. and your yeah. experience. Yeah. And what was the kind of focus of your, your talk? Because sadly, I couldn't, couldn't make it yeah. that day. So it's basically just kind of like a timeline of events from when I first started to create music up, up until now and like what I've got coming in the future kind of. And it, the stuff that have come in the future have already like happened. Some of the stuff have already happened. Yeah. Um, over the last couple of months. So yeah. yeah, it was just like a whole timeline and okay, like this is where I started. Here's like the middle when I wanted to quit and then like here I am now. Yeah. Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah cause you do, mm. that. that's, you mentioned quitting. Mm. Like we do get those moments, don't we? When we're kind of like, Oh, like, you know, with this podcast, I'm like, is it any good? Or mm. Is anybody listening? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And you just think, oh God, I don't want to do this anymore. And how do you get over that? Because. Mm, how did I get over that? Um, I had to write a letter to myself. So it was like kind of like a, you know, when you kind of write a letter to your future self. Yeah. Um, but I came, I didn't come up with that idea on my own. I was watching a video um, by a YouTuber that I follow. I've been following him for like the last couple of years. Um, his name's Curtis King. And um, okay. he just basically, I think, I think it was him. Yeah, it was him. So he basically, he basically um, said, okay, um, write down all the things that you enjoy about music. How does it make you feel? 
um, you know, why, why do you like to make it? Those type of things. So write that down on a piece of paper, give it a date, give it a title. Um, and then whenever you kind of get an element of doubt, just refer back to, back to this letter and then you should, you should be okay. You sh- it should be enough to keep you going. Yeah. That's a really good bit of advice. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to do that. Mm. I really am. Cause yeah. you know, we all have those moments, don't we? Where yeah. we're just, we really doubt ourselves. Mm. Do you, do you have those moments when you kind of like just fall into this big dark hole and you're kind of, Oh my God, I'm just rubbish. Nobody mm. likes me. Yeah, I'm yeah, just, definitely. what am I doing? Why am I wasting my time? But you'll just pick up this letter and mm. read it and remind yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I actually posted it on Instagram. It's there for, there now if you want to go and see it. Oh, amazing. I yeah, will. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what, what kind of like highlights are on there? You know, um, is it just really sort of simple? Like, you know, you're doing really well and don't be so hard on yourself. Well, I think it's, I actually described the feeling of actually creating a piece of music. So it's kind of something I like, something like, okay, when I combine this sound with this sound, like I, I remember shouting around the room and just being like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, it's just kind of more so the feeling of being in that moment. Yeah. It's I'm like not, sheer joy. Yeah. I'm not thinking about anything else, just what's happening right now. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you, I, I have a feeling you're not going to sort of go into graphic design. I feel like you're going to sort of move towards music more. But yeah. like, again, it's about not putting your eggs in all in yeah, one basket, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of like in the middle right now. Um, and I kind of just use both elements, you know, in each field. Yeah. Yeah, and bring them together. Yeah. 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 Mm. And you mentioned that kind of like joyful moment when it mm. sort of all comes together. I think we can relate to that with anything that we do, whether it's writing a piece of um, writing an article for a newspaper or, um, in your case, maybe like designing a logo. Mm. Um, it, it just feels like everything just comes together in this amazing moment and you're just like, oh, <laughs> finally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I don't know about you, but I've really struggled this year. Like I've, I've, I've found moments where I'm like, this is not working. Okay. And, and, you know, my husband who I work with and obviously we live together and he said, um, he said, just go and have a walk, yeah, just yeah, go out yeah. for some fresh air and mm. then you'll come back and it'll, it'll, it'll work. And it's so funny, even now at my age, you kind of forget these little life lessons, mm. these little pearls of wisdom where you're like, yeah, why didn't I think of that? I'll just go for some fresh air and it'll come to me or I'll, I'll go out on my bike or I'll listen to some music and dance around the living room or whatever. Mm. And, and it comes to you and you're like, it, do you find yourself running to your kind of, is it, what, what do you use now? What equipment do you use for your yeah, music? So, um, I use my laptop, got the software on it, which is called FL studio, Very um, nice. some cheap headphones and a cheap set of speakers, which I actually put on top of, um, a sponge to kind of absorb the sound. Yeah. And I bought the sponge from Poundland. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So I just use that to kind of like absorb the sound. So, um, it kind of elevates it off the desk a little bit. Yeah. yeah it's just that very cheap little setup. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Cause I suppose mm. back in the day, yeah. it was very expensive to make yeah, music yeah, yeah, and yeah. now it's accessible to mm. everyone, isn't everyone, it? Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Mm. Very briefly in between um, graduation and finding my first job in radio, mm. um, I worked for a company in my hometown called Music Control. Okay. And they specialised in sourcing analog keyboards, vintage okay, keyboards. Nice, nice. Loads <laughs> of really cool. Like you'll know of the brands I've forgotten now. Um, mm-hmm. Was it Moog? Moog there was yeah, like yeah. things like that. Um, and we would source them for people who are quite famous. Actually, oh. I, rem- I remember talking to Radiohead on the phone okay, yeah, yeah. and Jamaraquai mm. and who else? There were so many people. Oh, and one day. I was there, I, this is when I smoked, I was very bad. <laughs> I was outside having a cigarette and Bonehead from Oasis turned up in his, um, it was like a kind of, sorry, Bonehead, really <laughs> horrible brown Bentley. Okay. Well. And just to pick up a kind of, I think it was like a drum kit synthesizer right, or something. Right. And so that was a really surreal little kind of part-time job that I did for mm. a while, but I got an insight into the music that, you know, some of the, the bits of kit that these amazing musicians were were using for their you know to make their sounds mm. but that was like 20 years ago yeah probably longer actually <laughs> and, um, and mm. now you can just make it on your laptop it's yeah. just incredible mm. um what tips would you give for people who are like hoping to like you know do their own music you know what can they get started on is there a kind of some nice sort of entry level um so what i would recommend is don't underestimate the value of um using like demo plugins right. or free plugins. So 
even up until this day, like I still use a lot of free sounds. So don't look at them and think, oh no, there won't be any good. I need like the really expensive stuff. Just start with what you can afford. Yeah. Um, be humble, you know, don't think that, oh, I'm too good for these little cheap plugins. Like you're not, like honestly, you're not. <laughs> like I, I still use stuff, cheap stuff to this day, free stuff to this day. So um, yeah, just, just use what you can get your hands on, whatever you can get your hands on. Yeah, because yeah, there is a little bit of snobbery, isn't yeah, there, yeah, with definitely. music? Yeah, That's always been the case. Yeah, the people are like, oh no, I need like this 500 pound sound sound bank. <laughs> it's like, you don't, just use the free sounds here that you have and then combine the free sounds with a, maybe some expensive sounds and then you've got like something yeah. decent, you know? Yeah, yeah it's yeah. not about the actual, you know, the, the those actual samples, it's about what you do with them. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. And what, what did your sister think of all this music that you were producing? She, she loves it. Like I always um, like send it to her or I'll be like, oh, can I play you what I made recently? And she's like, yeah, go on then, go on then. Yeah. So um, I made a remix a couple of weeks ago and she said that that was like the favourite thing, the most favourite thing that I've made, you know, over the last couple of years. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. Sounds like you're closer to your sister than you are to your younger yeah, brothers. Yeah, yeah, because they, they live with my dad. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I don't, I don't see them as much, um, but yeah, me and my sister... We, we speak all the time. That's yeah. great. And yeah. your dad lives in Manchester as yeah, well. Yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah. That, and you can just be near to your family because mm. I, I really envy people who've got all their family in one place because mm, mm. we don't have that. They're all over. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's one of those things. Do you watch television or do you just kind of like stream stuff? Um, I have like a bit of a balance. Yeah. A bit of a balance. Yeah, yeah. So when I'm watching TV, it's kind of, it's mostly like Family Guy. I love Family Guy. Oh my God, yeah. I love Family Guy. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching oh it since. Oh my God, I love it. Yeah, I've been watching it since high school. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Can you do any impressions of any of the characters? Because uh, I can, I can. I can do a really good Pete. Okay, okay well, you have to close your eyes though and really imagine. <clears throat> okay, you ready? Yeah. Hi, 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 Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Damn you, foul woman! Oh yes, there is. <laughs> That's about yeah. it, though. <laughs> like, I didn't realise until like years later that Stevie's actually like his voice is a British British voice. Yeah. And everyone else is American. Yeah, like, yeah. It took me years to realise. Yeah. yeah, and it's by about I think it's about oh, what's the name of the guy that does all the, the Seth? Oh, what's his name? Uh, Oh, Seth MacFarlane. That's it. That's Mac it. MacFarlane, yeah. And he does like about three or four of the voices. Mm -hmm. It's just I know, I know so he talented. Does, he does Peter's voice, I think. Yeah. I think he does Brian's as well. Brian, yeah. 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 I think he does Joe's as well. <laughs> hey, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's just good fun, isn't it? Sometimes mm. you just need to watch something that doesn't take itself too seriously. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love it. Just it. takes yeah. your mind, th mm. mind off. So I think without like giving you any more pain and suffering <laughs> with, him, with my kind of cartoon impressions, I think that's a nice sort of opportunity to wrap this up and mm. say thank you so much for coming to my house and, and chatting about your career so far. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening. This is the Creative Boom podcast and I'm your host, Katie Cowan. That's it for season one. We're done. It's it's over it's really sad to be saying goodbye to you for a little while but we will be back and if you watch this space on creative boom announcements will be made regarding season two soon in the meantime if you've not listened to all the episodes you can go to creativeboom.com forward slash podcast to catch up and you can subscribe via that link in the meantime take care have a great summer and we'll see you very soon